Hey, welcome to this map and mini map tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this asset and what are the different features that are available in it. So first, uh, let's just take a look at what this asset can do. So as you can see here, I have the mini map as I, and as I explore the map, you can see it gets uh, revealed. And then I also have, when I click here, a full screen version of the map that I can uh, move around and zoom in, zoom out. One of the cool thing about this asset is that you can uh, attach icon to any object. So for example, this tree here has an icon attached. So when I go um, in the map, it will appear here. And uh, for example, if you were going to go and cut this tree and remove it or destroy it, then it will stop appearing here because the game object in the map has been destroyed. Okay, so now I'm going to use a survival engine to show you how to uh, integrate the map into your own project. Survival engine is really not necessary for this asset. I'm just going to use um, this as an example, but you can use it um, with any other engine or with any other project, it will work too. Survival engine is not uh, mandatory for this. So first I'm going to go and uh, import the asset. All right, so let's go in the map minimap folder in prefabs. So there's two things that you will want to include in all your scenes that you want to use the map. So first is the map manager, which handles all the controls and uh, all the core feature of the asset. And then you will want to include the map setting to this one um, as all the settings are already specific to each scene. So each scene will have a different map and a different zone that is set here. And then you also have generic map settings here that are applied to um, everything. I'll show you later what they do. So the first thing I want to set in the setting here is the map zone. So I'll go in the prefab and also add the zone. And this zone will uh, really determine uh, what is the map covering in your scene. So like what's the region where the map will be applied. So if I want, I can uh, show the render just to see where the zone is. And then I will go and resize it to my world. So I want the map to cover this area, for example. And then I can just remove the mesh after that uh, so it's not in the way. And then I will add the zone to the settings here. Then the next thing that you will want to add here is the texture for the map, which is really just the PNG image of your map. But there's a way that you can generate it automatically from your scene. If you want, you can draw it yourself and just add it manually, but you can also generate it. If you want to generate it, you will need to use this prefab here, map capture. Uh, you need to set the zone to here and then you click on generate map and it will create a map here for your scene it will have the same name than your scene so as you can see this is uh, exactly the same region that we set with the zone so if I set the zone smaller for example let's say I don't cover the river here and then I capture again and as you can see, the river is not part of the map anymore because I've reduced the size of the zone. So let's do it again correctly. And now I will go and add this texture into the settings. One of the cool thing with the map capture tool is that what you can do is generate a map first automatically and then um, you can go in Photoshop and draw your own map. So you basically use this as a template to draw your own map if you want to make it maybe more pretty. It's good to start from a template because then your map will have the exact same proportion than on your world. You will not have um, things that are a bit offset or at the wrong position. You will know exactly the right positions of everything. So when you go on Photoshop and draw on top of it, then you have a good reference of where 
everything should be drowned and then once you have your own map you can just go in the setting and change the image here and put the anything you want so now this should be good I can start the the demo scene and if I press on M I will see the map appear right now it's so it's uh, loading a preview save so that's why I already have some things revealed but if I go and start a new game as you can see there's nothing revealed yet and the reason for that is that we did not um, assign a player for the map system so the map system doesn't know yet uh, which player is revealing the map so we need to do that now so I'll click on player character add component actually you can also do it directly on the prefab so I'll open the prefab here add and you will add a map icon here and you need to make sure to set this to the player because if you want you can have a lot of different icons like trees and uh, quest markers and other things like that but um, if you want it to uh, be the player that reveals the fox then you need to uh, select player here and also um, the difference between important and default is that important will appear on top of the fog while default will uh, not be visible for the things that are not revealed yet and the part where my character is is not revealed so I can move around and as you see as I go around this map gets revealed I can also attach an icon I did not set the icon here but if I want I can say boy character so I will have an icon for this now you can see the icon it's a bit small but I can uh, resize it if I want I have a scale here let's make it much bigger there you go okay another thing that you can do with this asset is to add a mini map directly in the UI so if I want to do that I just go in um, this is the full screen map UI but if I want to add it to my gameplay UI then you will just open your regular UI prefab so in this case it's this and I will go and add the minimap so I go into UI prefab UI and I have a minimap here so I can just uh, add it in gameplay for example and then set it to a better position and then let's try this and now you have a minimap here that works exactly the same way than the full screen map and when I click on it it opens the map What I like to do with the minimap is to hide the, the player icon so it's not in the way. So you can see here in the settings and um, show player. If I want to show the player on this uh, map render, I can just click here. And then you have a lot of different other settings for each script that you can set. All of this is explained in the PDF file here if you want more detail about each individual settings. But I'll show you at least the main settings here so this is the generic icon size before I show you how to resize um, just one icon for example here I had this icon that I resize this will only resize this specific icon but if I want to resize all the icons this is the default size in pixel and then zoom max is um, how much you can zoom the map and then if you want you can just disable the fog here to have uh, the whole thing already revealed like this now I don't have any fog I can see the whole map another thing that you should know with the map capture tool is that you don't need to render everything uh, for example right now the maps that I created has all the trees and everything but um, if you want you can remove some things here to add them as icons instead so for example if I want to have the trees show as icon instead of the one that we are just screenshot for the map 
I can go and change a render mask here to uh, remove some things on the map. So if I want, I could go in layer and um, let's say I add a tree layer. And then on my pine prefab, I will set this to tree. And on my other kind of tree, I will do the same thing. Then um, when you click on map capture, you can remove this layer. So when you generate the map, then you don't have the tree in the ways. There are still some here, but it's th these are other prefabs that I didn't change yet. I think, yeah, it's for example, it's this tree here, the apple tree. I didn't change it yet, but you can just do the same and change its layer here and it will stop appearing. Then if I start this, you don't see the trees, all the trees here anymore. So instead, if you want to replace this by an icon, I can just go and open the prefab and add a map icon and then add my tree leaf here. So now all the trees will be displayed as icons instead of the just being the default capture. The last thing I want to show you is how um, to use some of the function in the script. So if I go in the map manager, you will see there's a few functions that can be very useful that you can call from other script if you want to code your own system. So for example, if you want to open or close the full map. Also, if you want to reveal some of the map without having to go there with your player, then you can just call the function reveal at a position and then set a radius. You can also reveal the whole map and check if a position is revealed. So in this case, the position is a world position in your scene. You also have function here to add icons. So for example, if you have a quest system in your game and you want to add a quest marker whenever uh, you start a new quest, you can just call this function here to add an icon. Another thing that you can do, maybe that easier for you, is to go in the prefab here. For example, I have uh, in the markers folder, I have a quest marker prefab here. So this is basically an invisible object with an icon that will appear on the map. So in the script, what you can do is just um, disable it or enable it to make it appear or disappear. So as you can see now on my map, I have a quest marker here. And then um, if, for example, you have a script that make it disappear after the quest is completed, it will be deactivated. Then it will be automatically removed here because you disabled the object or you destroyed it. So that's another way that you can just add and remove markers on the map. All right, so I think that covers all the basics of this asset. If you have questions or suggestions, feel free to leave it in the comments below and have a nice day.